Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, the last lectures we were discussing about gross weight and the importance of aerofoil in a generic manner. We also discussed about the speeds required for let's say ensuring maximum rate of climb or to fly at a minimum power. And we are trying to discuss in a generic manner how the aerofoil will play an important role. We need not debate much on this point regarding the importance of aerofoil because after all lift which has to be equal to weight for the cruise is given as half rho v square SCL. This is the dynamic pressure, this is the wing area and this is the CL what we are talking about. Also, we know as a designer, we should not only think in terms of CL, we should think in terms of CL by CD because CL will also induce drag, which we know is called induced drag. So, when I am selecting an aerofoil, I should not only think in terms of CL, but also try to see what is the CL by CD maximum I get and under what conditions and under what speed. So if I try to summarize as far as airfoil selection is concerned, loosely I can say I need to know what is the cruise speed I am going to fly the machine. I need to know takeoff and landing distance required and also stall speed I'll explain all this term then handling qualities and aerodynamic efficiency Why cruise speed should be back of our mind in selecting the aerofoil? Because finally, as the designer, I want that should fly with drag minimum. Also, I should know that if the cruise speed is low subsonic, then there is a drag characteristics, which is differently when I try to design an airplane for high subsonic speeds or a near transonic speed or near supersonic speed. That is how the airfoil shape is likely to be different. For example, for a supersonic speed, you want the nose part to as pointed as possible, provided you can manage it structurally. Right? Takeoff and landing, why this is important? Because you know takeoff and landing that speed takeoff or landing roughly is 1.2 times V stall. Okay? And V stall is 2 W by S by rho C L max. So if I want V takeoff or landing to be low or lower, then I should ensure that V stall is I lower at it. If I want V takeoff or V landing to be lower, then I should ensure the V stall to be lower during takeoff and landing. What indirectly means is for other thing remaining constant, CL max should be high. The CL max would be high, could be possible if you select an aerofoil. 
instead of this, you could select an aerofoil where CL max is high. So from the beginning, you have a aerofoil selected which will have CL max high, but you understand the moment I look for CL max high, I am mentally prepared to give penalty in terms of drag, even the stall angle may reduce. So to overcome that, you will find people use flaps. We'll, we'll come to that. So but this is basic aerofoil, and then you put the flap, flap down, that is. If this is a basic aerofoil, I put flap down some degrees, 10, 20, 30 degrees, and ensure that the CL max is enhanced. So that is where, when you are selecting an airfoil, I also keep in mind takeoff and landing distance because if V takeoff and V landing distance, uh, speeds are less, then for a given thrust to weight ratio, the takeoff and landing distance also will be less. Right? Stall speed, you understand. When I'm selecting an aerofoil, I would like to know what is the V stall. I will always like V stall to be as low as possible, uh, but it, can, it should not be lesser than the amount. It should not be so less that it becomes too sensitive to wind and, and the environment conditions. But yes, stall speed depends on CL max inversely. So when I select an aerofoil, I try to see CL max to be as high as possible. Handling qualities, why handling qualities? Because the performance of the airplane near the stall is a very, very important parameter for the pilot to have a smooth handling or better or good handling qualities. So again, in handling qualities, you find somehow the stall angle, this angle plays an important role. So I need to look for an aerofoil which generally has higher stall angle. And of course, aerodynamic efficiency, which we have talked about. I will look for an aerofoil where CL by CD max is what I look for. It should be higher one, maybe 13, 14, 15, even for gliders, it'd be much, much higher, right? If this is from the aerofoil side, what I look for in a design, when I translate this aerofoil into wing, right? There's another important parameter which you should uh, clearly understand, which has direct implication. If I draw an aerofoil, This distance, which they call thickness to chord ratio, this also plays an important role. We could see that if TYC is large, then the flow will accelerate here faster than aerofoil having TYC less. But TYC large gives me an advantage for a given chord. I've got larger volume in the wing where I can store fuel. I can store other components. Right? But the point is, as I increase TYC, the drag may also increase. So I have to be careful. If I increase TYC, the M critical may reduce. If I increase TYC, these are all generic statements. If the increase TYC, M critical may reduce. So T by C will play an important role. And as a designer, without thinking of big, big aerodynamics, you can see if this T by C is large and the flow accelerates faster than decelerates, so there could be a region where there's a high adverse pressure gradient and flow may separate in a manner which you don't like. The flow may not exist as a laminar flow, if you are designing a laminar flow aerofoil, the flow will become turbulent sooner than you are desiring. So T by C also will play an important role. Now you can understand when I am 
generating data for different types of aerofoil, uh, which are to be used in the database, we used to call NACA aerofoil. Nowadays, of course, we have a customized aerofoil. But if you see, when the data were generated, data will be generated in such a manner that it will give you the thickness to call distribution, the leading edge, radius. It will tell what is the speed for which CL velocity is maximum, what will be its CL max I can achieve. All those parameters will be given as a parameters to select which aerofoil you want. So I will just go back to the NACA aerofoil uh, era and explain you some nomenclature to understand what is the aerofoil and what are its special features so that we can select aerofoil based on those nomenclature. Before I go for the nomenclature, which is purely mechanical thing, but we as a designer should know how important it is for us to understand the database, why those nomenclature. Before I go to that, let me also uh, explain you, if you recall, most of the drag polar CL and CD of an aerofoil takes this sort of a shape. And we say this is the minimum CD. Now the point is, you'll find latest aerofoil which have been used, their shape not only looks like this, it, it may be something like this, then goes like this, and there is a bucket. Oh, sorry. There is a bucket like this. This is a bucket formation. Typically, this sort of aerofoil where CL by CD shows a bucket, we call it laminar bucket. The importance is this, if you see during this region, even if there is increase in CL, there is hardly any increase in CD. But if you see the other type of aerofoil, where it is something like this, and this is CL and this is CD, if there is increase in CL, the CD will go on increasing, right? Here it is this, this, this. So as a designer, I will prefer a laminar bucket type aerofoil so that even if I'm changing CL because of different, different operational requirement, I do not give too much of drag penalty. But please understand, this is typically a laminar aerofoil and nomenclature wise we'll find there are six series aerofoil mostly. But there's an issue with laminar bucket type of aerofoil is that if there's a slight imperfection in the construction, even if a, you find some insect material, dead material is there, the flow immediately becomes turbulent, right? But there's a trend that mostly people will be using six series or derivative of six series or customized six series aerofoil. So it's called seven series, eight series, all those things. The idea would be, what is the nose radius I'm looking for? What is the point where I am finding out that the CP pressure coefficient is becoming zero? It is not necessarily that pressure coefficient will zero only at T by C maximum location. Because CP is zero, or pressure coefficient zero is the important parameter, because then I know where from the adverse pressure gradient will start acting or pressure gradient variation, how it will act, which will be responsible for uh, flow separation. Right? So with this background, let us come back to the nomenclature part. I will not talk about all the nomenclatures available, but few one and it is expected that you read books and really uh, understand why these nomenclatures and how much a designer can take information from those nomenclature. I am adding few more designers' perspective 
before you go for the nomenclature, especially uh, to get a feel how thickness ratio will implicate in terms of flow separation on an aerofoil in a very generic manner. And I am referring a text from uh, Raymer's book. You can read Raymer's book. So I give a heading a stall and I say important role. You will find some aerofoil will show gradual reduction in lift and some aerofoil will show violent loss of lift and rapid change in pitching moment. For example, if we take cambered aerofoil wings, this is a cambered aerofoil wing. If you see this diagram, its CL max will be more, but it will have large CMAC negative. That is, if I just throw it, it natural tendency to go down like this. Right. So, the, in Raymer's perception, he has explained three types of stall. Very wonderful summary of his experience and I thought it must be shared. One, he talks about fat aerofoil. That is rounded, what is the characteristics? Rounded leading edge. That is if I draw an aerofoil, this leading edge is rounded. I can put a circle here. And T by C, thickness to chord ratio is greater than or equal to 14%. You may be cursing me, why suddenly is talking about T by C, what is T by C ratio? Sat has not mentioned anything about how aerofile looks like, what are their camber line, how to select, how to choose or how to see even a camber line. So let me do that for you, which I presume you are all knowing this, because you have done already two courses. This is the leading edge and this is the trailing edge, okay? And this distance is called chord, right? And if I take every section like this, take the middle part, then this will give me the camber line, which is the camber line. And this is the thickness of, I can say, T by C ratio. Or thickness non dimensionalized with chord. So what is camber then? If I, for completion, I write, let me explain you what is camber. Camber, I am in particular to write exactly what is being accepted by everyone, but you could see that through your common sense you can find out what is camber. I need not always follow this definition. So, is the maximum distance between the mean camber line and the chord line this is important measured 
perpendicular to the chord line. This is important. Because here, because the chord line is horizontal here, so we are talking about the maximum distance between the mean camber line, this is the mean camber line, and the chord line, chord line measured perpendicular to the chord line. So that is what is the camber. That is, if this is the chord line, this is the camber, this is the camber, this is the camber, this is the camber. Okay? It is possible that the chord line is something like this and mean camber line is something like this and I take the mean position. So that time I will say the camber is, I have to draw a perpendicular, perpendicular to the chord line. So that will become the camber, right? This should be clear in your mind. Okay, then leading edge radius which I was talking here mostly you will find this is 0 0.0 times C bar or C bar or don't say C bar, chord 2% of the chord, around that so now you know this nomenclature now I feel okay to talk about the mechanical thing that nomenclature. I will start with four digit nomenclature. This is Naka, let's say Naka 2412. Okay. What are the information you get from here? That is maximum Kimber, maximum Kimber is 0 0.02 C. This is this one. What is this for? Signifies that location of location of maximum Kimber is 0.4 from leading edge. Right, C is the chord. And this 12, that is T by C maximum is 0 0.1 to C or, or, or T by C is 12%. T by C max is 12%. So once you see a NACA four digit nomenclature, immediately from this number, you could easily find out what are the information you are getting. After four digit nomenclature, now we are discussing about five digit nomenclature. You'll find NACA 23012. How to read that? The guideline or the direction is how to read this is that three by two multiplied by first digit will give you Design CL in 10th. 3 by 2, first digit is 2, so 3, it will be 0 0.3. What is the next two digit? How do I take information from that? It says next two digits divided by 2 gives me the, gives me the location of maximum camber along the chord line from leading edge in 100th of the chord. Right? It's not a big philosophical statement, right? You can just follow it. Let us see if I try to understand this NACA 23012, what other information we get. Let's say five digit is NACA 23012. As for the first statement, three by two into two, because it is two is the first digit, this gives me three, but in tenth it is telling, so 0.3 is the design CL. Right. Second one is next two digit divided by two. Next two digit is 30. 
So 30 divided by 2 gives me 15, but it st says maximum camber along chord line from leading edge in hundredth of the chord. So 15 divided by 100 is 0.15c. So it's, it tells me that if I move from the leading edge here and at 0.15c, the camber will be maximum. And of course, last digit tells me T by C maximum, which is 12%, right? Which is also, we say, 12% T by C max. So this is what are the information we get from a nomenclature, which is five-digit nomenclature. After five-digit nomenclature or five-series nomenclature, we are talking about six-series nomenclature. The six-series, when you talk about, you should be mentally prepared that we are now going into a laminar type of aerofoil, okay? I'll just give you an example, Naka 641, 212, and A equal to 0. 0.6. What does it mean? The 6 is a series designation for the nomenclature. And you should understand that for a 6 series aerofoil, it has been designed to maximize the region over which the flow is laminar. Advantage? A drag over small region of lift coefficient can be substantially reduced. Because you know laminar will give reduced drag. But I have been telling you the word of caution, the manufacturing becomes a challenge, one is very particular, and maintenance of the surface of the wing is also very, very important. In fact, if I tell cleanliness of the surface, that is also a challenge, and one has to be particular about it. Because slight uh, impurities or foreign elements sitting on the wing may turn the flow into a turbulent flow. Right. So that was all about six. Now the next one is four. Four tells you location of minimum pressure in tenth of chord. That is, if this is the wing aerofoil, and as you know, there will be acceleration, so there will be pressure drop, and there will be a point where, which correspond to the minimum pressure point. And that is being explained here, that at point 0.4c from the leading edge, you will have a point where the pressure coefficient will be minimum. What is that one indicates? One indicates that low drag is maintained at a lift coefficient equal to 0.1 above and below the design lift coefficient 0.2. Where from this 0.2 came? This is from here, the next is 2. So 0.2 is the design lift coefficient, you know, from here. And this 1 tells you that 0.1 or above or 0.1, below 0.2, you will have the drag coefficient or the drag lower, right? So we say indicates that low drag is maintained. As, you, as I was mentioning, for a six series or a laminar type aerofoil, there is a laminar bucket, right? That is being talked about. If, we, if I further clarify this, okay. this is your laminar bucket, okay? If this is the design CL, then 0.1 above by 0.1 down will have low drag configuration. Right? So this is also important because you, as a designer to know all the time you are not going to fly at design CL. So what are those off conditions and whether your aerofoil is optimally selected or not. Right? So that helps you in this. T by C is 12. T by C max is 12 percent and also a equal to 0.6. This is also additional information you get from a six series nomenclature. It tells you 60% of the chord, over 60% of the chord, this is over, 60% of the chord, the pressure distribution is uniform. It goes like, it's not that sharply, it's not falling, okay? So it will be over 60% of the chord, the pressure distribution will be uniform. That is also important when you talk about minimizing drag or flow separation, stall, and all those things 
will be very clear when I talk about supercritical aerofoil. These are the steps towards you know, defining a supercritical aerofoil as well. You see that this is very important. A equal to 0.6, 60% of cord distribution is uniform. I started with uh, Raymer's perception about aerofoil as a designer. I started at some point, then I went back to the nomenclature. I'm again coming back. And please appreciate what a designer should have. All these nomenclatures are fine, theory is fine, but as a designer, how do you perceive things? He characterized the aerofoil as fat aerofoil, thin aerofoil, very thin aerofoil. So for fat aerofoil, what is his message to us is typically aerofoil rounded leading edge and T by C greater than or equal to 14%. And what we will see is such a aerofoil near the stall. It is important we are discussing about stall and how an aerofoil should have uh, characteristics near the stall because that is going to decide the handling qualities, which is a very important design parameter. Says for a fat aerofoil, which are rounded leading edge T by C greater than 14 percent, such aerofoil stalls from the trailing edge. Then turbulent boundary layer, boundary layer becomes very turbulent as angle of attack increases. And the flow separation starts from trailing edge and moves towards leading edge as alpha is increased. The loss of lift is gradual, this is very important. And pitching moment changes are small. Understand this, the loss of lift is gradual and pitching moment changes is small changes. It starts stalling from the trailing edge. Okay? And boundary layer becomes turbulent as we increase the angle of attack which has direct implication on the drag part, right? So if I try to draw this, if this is an aerofoil where T by C is greater than 14%, if I translate those observation, it says stalls from the trailing edge, so separation, so stalls from the trailing edge. As I increase angle of attack, this stalling or the separation moves towards the leading edge. And finally, whole flow separates. And in that process, loss of lift will be gradual and pitching moment changes will be smaller. This is the perception of Raymer when he talks about fat, which are rounded leading, leading edge aerofoil with T by C greater than 14%. If you are a designer, you will find how useful are these observations. Similarly, he has talked about thinner aerofoil. Let me talk about thinner aerofoil. After that fat aerofoil, let us also see the thinner aerofoil as far as Raymer's perception. Yes. Typically the T by C between 6 to 14 percent, around 9-10 percent will be okay. We talk about thinner aerofoil. And those are, as a design, uh, designer's language, we call it moderate thickness. When you say moderate thickness, it means 8 to 9 percent, 10 percent, like that. The moment you're going beyond 12, 12, we are cautioned, it's no more a moderate thickness. What is the beauty of those aerofoil? The flow separates near the nose at a very small angle of attack. Very small angle of attack, flow separates, but at small angle, flow separates, but it reattaches. But as you increase the angle of attack, there is no reattachment and suddenly the flow stalls or the flow separates and there is an abrupt change in CL and pitching moment. That is what one designer should be very, very clear if you are working with this sort of aerofoil depending upon what flight regime you are flying, what angle of attack you are flying. So typically if I represent a small angle of attack, there may be separation but it reattaches but as angle of attack is increased there is no reattachment and suddenly you will find the whole flow will separate. Very abruptly the flow separates. But this happens from leading edge to trailing edge. 
This is important. The flow separation starts from leading edge to trailing edge. Unlike for fat aerofoil, it was from trailing edge to leading edge. So the lift loss was gradual. But here, it starts from leading edge. So naturally, the leading edge portion is the portion where the lift generation is most uh, efficient. If that part stalls, then naturally the lift stall will be very, very abrupt. And naturally, there will be abrupt change in lift coefficient and pitching moment coefficient. So that is the story when you are working for a moderate thickness aerofoil, which your nomenclature does thinner aerofoil. The last one, which I want to share with you, is a very thin aerofoil. Very thin aerofoil. Again, it is Raymer's perception. So I am says flow separates from the nose at small angle at small alpha and reattaches immediately. This is fine. a separation bubble stretches towards trailing edge as alpha is increased If I try to um, see the similarity between what you're talking about thinner and very thin aerofoil, here you'll observe loss of lift is smooth, but large changes in pitching moment. That is the, the difference, very thin, maybe 2, 3, 3%, 4% tube IC. You'll find flow separates from nose at small angle of attack and reattaches, same. Separation bubble stretches. So it is something like this. If this is thin, there is a separation bubble. Now, as I increase angle of attack, the separation bubble goes over this and then Further, if I increase the angle of attack, this whole separation bubble that breaks. The movement is from leading edge to trailing edge. So this a separation bubble stretches towards the trailing edge as alpha is increased. And there is a separation here. Observation is the loss of lift is smooth, but large change in pitching moment. So this is what the perception of our knowledge base shared by Raymer. And as a designer, you need to see this vis-a-vis -vis the aerodynamic characteristics of different aerofoil, right? And you sit with an aerodynamist and talk to him, what does it mean? What, how do I customize my aerofoil so that this thing doesn't happen or this thing should happen, right? So that is why there's a constant interaction with the aerodynamist when a designer looks for a particular type of performance. For example, if he's designing an airplane or an unmanned aerial vehicle of Heron class, 6700 kg weight, speed is not high, so it is prone to experience large angle of attack if there is a vertical upward gust. So designer will ask the aerodynamics, can you give me an aerofoil which has a very good stall characteristics? Designer may not be satisfied with whatever aerofoils are available, even customized aerofoil uh, characteristics, the designers may not be happy about it. There is a limit to which an aerofoil shape can be configured, but then designer will not sit idle. That is what I am telling you, what a designer, how a designer different from a person who is doing analysis. 
One designer what it will do, okay, this is the maximum stall angle you are able to give with this aerofoil. So I'll put a split aerofoil here. The split aerofoil, the Heron has used that. So what will happen, if this was not there, this was having a stall angle, let's say, 12, 13 degrees. The moment you put a split aerofoil, then you could see that air goes from here and comes out like this, and it pushes the stall, so the stall angle increases, right? The important thing is, how do you contour this part so that the air coming should not go like this? It should come and follow the path. That is where the million dollar design, wind tunnel testing, CFD, etc. plays a role, right? So, Whatever I'm trying to give you, I'm sharing few knowledge base of designers, few from analysts who are an analytical person, and also trying to give you an example uh, how you are not an aerodynamist, you are not a structural man, you are a designer, right? And you have to be smart. Just being bright will not make a good designer. A designer has to be sufficiently bright and more importantly, he should be smart as well. Are you prepared for that or not? We'll learn from these courses. And I can guarantee you that we will become all smarter. Thank you very much.